before I get started, I want to uh, thank TEDx Ames for inviting an Indian classical musician and a metal musician uh, at this platform. Um, Indian music has always been the savior and uh, of, of Indian culture and Indian sound. And uh, it's, it's, it's a huge honor to be representing a, a community of Indian classical musicians at this platform. So thank you so much, TEDx Ames. Uh, all right, so I'm pretty sure that everyone in this room at some point in their lives wanted to do something insanely huge, insanely big that felt totally out of your reach. And that, that's something that mostly happens to us when we are small. Uh, we want to do something insanely huge and insanely big. Uh, can you raise your hands if you, want, if you wanted to do something insanely big with your lives? Oh, that's, that, that's a lot. <laughs> Believe me, I was one of, uh, I'm, I'm still one of you. Uh, so what happens is that when we are small, we, we only focus on the possibilities in life. When we are small, we are only aware of what we can do. And we, we tend to ignore all that stops us. When we are small, we tend to uh, imagine and wish for the most bizarre things in life. But as we grow up, we tend to settle for some things that are more uh, not, not as big. For example, when I was small, I, I, I always wanted a Ferrari. But as you grow up, you have to settle for a Wagonar, you know? So, yeah. so why that happens is because as you grow up, the world around you floods your world with limitations, with facts, and with, they'll give you every possible reason that why you cannot do something. And let me tell you one thing uh, that I learned from experience. Uh, I, I had these relatives and these family members that would always tell me that don't have a bizarre dream. Dream something more practical. Like they, they used to tell me all, all, that, stu all that, that kind of stuff. So uh, over time, I experienced uh, and I've learned that it's not the dreams that have to be practical. It's the journey that has to be practical. So even if you want to achieve something that's totally out of your reach, all you have to do is make sure that the journey to reaching that dream is practical. My father and guru, Pandit Manu Singhji, is not only one of the greatest sitar players and musicians today, but he's also one of the most interesting human beings and most inspiring people I've ever met. He, he always used to say something that I, I never really understood the meaning of, uh, but with time I, I understood what it really meant. He always used to tell me that dream and become something bigger than yourself. So now when you're 11 years old, you don't understand such deep stuff. But with time, uh, as I grew up, as I, as I played with him, as I uh, spent more time with him, I realized that what he actually meant was that whatever fields you choose, Whatever you do in life, make sure that there is always a peace for world in it. There's always a peace for people in it. It should inspire common goodness and it should also contribute in your fields. And that's one of the things that I want to talk to you about, that uh, you, you may choose any of the fields that you want, but make sure that there's always a peace in it for the people that helps them, that inspires goodness, and that also contributes in your field and expands the horizons of that field. So uh, with time, uh, I, I'm basically an Indian classical musician. Uh, but with time, I experienced a cultural shock. That was obviously uh, hearing a lot of metal music, a lot of rock music. And uh, so I, when I was 15 or 16 years old, I started touring with these bands. And uh, uh, I. I played a lot with these bands and these different artists who were not Indian classical. And I realized that in India, uh, our youth especially, was not fascinated by Indian instruments or Indian music. And the reason behind that was a common stereotype that Indian musicians are, are uh, very strict, very narrow-minded, and for lack of a better word, they are not cool. So I, I experienced that as I traveled with the bands and I, I played. And I realized that that was very sad because Indian music is our sound. It's, it's India. It's, it's our culture, you know. So we, uh, and, and one common thing that even if you're doctors or engineers, you must have noticed that you all work. And whenever you want to, uh, whenever you want an answer, not an escape, you always put on your headphones and listen to your favorite music. I'm, I'm sure all of you do that. Because art always has all the answers that you, that you ever wish for. So as I played with those bands and I, as I went around, I realized that uh, there, there is a lot of glory that should be brought back to Indian music and Indian instruments. 
So, for example, like I would go for a sound check with a band, and I would be the last one who would be given the time for the sound check. And I and during my check, everything would be rushed, and I would just have like a, a like few minutes to set up and to uh, get ready for the concert. Whereas the rock musicians or the guitar players or the drummers that would be with me would get hours to do the same. And another thing, whenever I used to go for uh, for practice, for band practice, uh, when, whenever we would enter a jam space, I would be given the most crappy amp amplifier in the room to plug my sitar in. Because I was a sitar player, like I'm not a guitar player, so my requirements are not as important. So I, I faced a lot of that and there, there came a time where, where I was like, damn, I have to do something, I have to, I have to change this. I have to bring that glory, that, that thing back to, to our original instruments and our music. So. What I did was, uh, there is a musical form called metal music, which is quite aggressive and quite outspoken. But it's, it's one of the most expressive and most spiritual form of music as well. So there is a band called Animals as Leaders. They are a band from the US. And they are one of the most technically and melodically advanced bands that, that play really complex music. And uh, so even guitar players have a very hard time playing those riffs and those songs on their instruments. So what I decided was that, OK, if, if a guitar player is not doing that, I should do that on a sitar. So I decided to cover, cover some, some bands and some different tunes. And so I started, th there's a song called Tempting Time. And I covered that song on a sitar. And before putting the entire video out on YouTube, uh, I released a teaser of that video, a very small teaser of that video. And I sent it to all the people that I admire and look up to. And no one got back to me. And uh, the only miracle that happened was that I got 30 views in 30 days. That's the only thing I, I received when I uploaded the teaser. So, but to me, that was kind of like 30 people making time to listen to an Indian instrument, to Indian classical music. And that was the biggest achievement for me. So I was quite inspired by that. And as I moved on, uh, I still remember it was 10th of July, 2015. I released the entire video on YouTube. And within like 10 days, it crossed like 3 lakh views on YouTube. And uh, with time, uh, it's, it's been a an year, an year almost, and I have released like three or four such videos. And they have all crossed around a million views on YouTube. So it's, it's, it's quite easy. Thank you. So all that happened, and uh, Honestly, it changed everything about my life. It changed every single thing that uh, that was uh, about me, and uh, so many dreams came true. I, I, I I'm literally at loss of words when I speak about that. Uh, so yeah, that that happened, and it got picked up. It got viral. It was in the newspapers. It was around the biggest musical magazines in the world, like Loudwire and Rolling Stones and Metal Injection, and it really got uh, very popular and. The most special thing about that was there was a point uh, after I released the videos. There was a point within a month that I started receiving these random emails from these people around the world. Like I still remember, there was an email from a person who stays in Ukraine, and he, he wrote me an email and said that this is just an example of how huge the impact was of that. He wrote he wrote, he wrote that uh, he's a huge fan of Pandit Ravi Shankar. And he is also a very avid listener of metal music. And all his life, he wanted to hear these two genres being combined together. And to hear my music, it was a dream come true for him. So those were the words from a person, a random person. And secondly, there was this another email that I remember, because there were, there were a ton of emails that I would get every day, like around 20 emails every day from random people. So there was this person who, sh who sent me a picture of a sitar in a very bad, hard case. And he, he told me that he was going to throw, throw away the sitar and he was going to buy something else. And he told me that after he saw my video, he immediately ordered new strings for that sitar. And he sent the sitar for repairs. And he told me that, oh my god, sitar playing just got cooler. So that, those were his words. So, to me, that was, that was not, not at all about me. It was, no, it, was, it was nothing about me. It was just about the instrument, about the culture that we represent, that I represent, and about the music that we play. So all this happened, and it, 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 
it has changed everything for me. Uh, just three days ago, I was in Nepal. I was I, I was playing at this music festival called Tanglewood Music Festival, and uh, I opened for one of the biggest guitar players on the planet called Gatsri Govan. And after playing, we we just hung out, and I went backstage to meet him. And he told me that next time he's in India, he's gonna buy a sitar and start playing a sitar. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so all that has happened, and one thing has been very common through through throughout my journey. Uh, it's it's been a few a few things that I've learned over time, and those few things I really want to share with you all. The first thing that obviously everyone wants to be successful in whatever fields you choose and whatever you do, but there are a few things that you have, you'll always have to remember. Apart from hard work and time management and dedication and all that. Though the first thing that I want to share is ambition. See, a lot of people hate ambitious people. You know why? Because an ambitious person always thinks that he can make a difference. I am a super ambitious person. I want to do big things. I want to play stadiums. I want to win a Grammy award. I want to do all that. And, and the world keeps giving me possible reason that why I cannot do that. And, and rather than being mad, mad at them, you have, you have to, to just grab, grab a pen, pen and paper, paper and just write those, those reasons of why, why you cannot do this. And then, and then you go, go home and you work, work and develop those reasons. reasons. So, the so the first thing, thing you have to always remember if you want to be successful is be super ambitious. And, and don't be afraid to stand out for you. Whatever, like, like, I always look, look weird, weird as hell, I know. But I'm super proud of whatever I stand for and whatever I'm here to represent. The second, the second thing, thing that, that, that you will always have to remember is, is being original. It's, it's, see, see, originality is something that will come from within yourself. yourself. It's, it's something, something that you, you necessarily you do not have to force. It's, it's just within. All you have to do is believe in yourself, spend, spend the, uh, make time, time for yourself, look a little deeper inside yourself, and you have something that the world has never experienced before. So you have to make use of that. So the second thing is originality. The last, the last thing, thing is fear. fear. So, so the thing about fear is that, that firstly, I think uh, that, that fear is not a bad thing. It's, it's a very really positive, positive thing. Because, because just imagine, imagine that when you are under the, the, the influence of fear, you tend, you tend to do some, some things that you otherwise, otherwise would not do. Like fear, fear can make you go to the extreme part of yourself. yourself. It, can it can make you do some things that you would not, that you cannot even imagine that you can do. So, so rather, rather than be afraid, afraid of you, you, you should learn to face, face those fears more and more, and, more and, and that's the only way you can get control, control over your fears. So, so fear is the last one that you'll always have to remember if you want, you want to be successful. You have to make use of the, the most powerful impulse of the human spirit, and that's fear. And, and lastly, I, I just want to say that, uh, that the, in, in my life, uh, I've, I've, I've always cherished these very small, small very small, small, small things that, that have happened along the way. And, and that's, as humans, we all need to cherish. We, we all should, 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 should aim for the biggest picture that we have in mind, but uh, along, along the way, we should never forget to cherish those moments, the small moments that we that we uh, accomplish. Uh, I told about the story that uh, I, I used to use the most like, I was given the most crappy amp in the world to practice and I would enter this amp. And just two days ago, I, 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 I became the official endorsee of the one of the biggest amplifier companies in the world called Lady Amplifications. So that's, 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 if you keep cherishing those small things and you do not let anything defeat you throughout your way, even if you're different, even if you're weird, you will just definitely make, make it the way you want to. And lastly, the, the, the all, all, all what I have learned from my life is that you have, you have to forget all the facts, all the facts that surround you. Okay. Forget where you come from, what you have, what you do not have, what you want to achieve in life. You just have to forget all the facts and focus only on possibilities. Because that's how the dreams come true. Success lies far from facts, it lies within possibilities. Thank you, Thank you so much. If...